So this is the Techquipment H215 Osborne Reynolds apparatus and with this the students will be able to observe laminar flow, transition flow and turbulent flow and with that information they can ultimately calculate and observe the Reynolds number. So a quick look at the major components of the unit. We have a reservoir of water here and that water comes from a tap with an overflow and the overflow is there to maintain a constant head of water. Okay? We have a glass tube that travels down the backboard and then ultimately to a drain and a collection vessel because we want to measure the flow rate. So the flow rate is a combination of knowing the time over a known volume. So that's the flow rate. A valve at the bottom controls the flow rate. Open the valve, more flow. Close the valve, less flow. At the top of the, the, the glass vessel, we've got a, an ink, a dye injection method. And it's using this long needle that passes through the reservoir and it is introduced into the thin glass tube. And when we open this valve, you will see a trail of ink. And the skill involved requires by opening and closing that valve, you will be able to observe the laminar flow, which is, which is going to be a nice, smooth pattern of ink. We open the flow a little bit more, then you'll start to see some agitation of the ink, and then f fully open, or at least more open, you will then see chaos inside the tube where, where the ink is going uh, in a chaotic manner. Okay. The H215 is an optional extra whereby you will be able to adjust the temperature of the water. By doing that you'll be able to observe different values of Reynolds number because the change in the temperature of the water affects its properties. So you will see different values of Reynolds number. So for, for installation purposes the first connection we have is the water supply. That comes from a tap, needs to be about one bar pressure and it needs to be of a clean supply. The output, which says hot, that goes to the input side of the glass vessel. So water in, overflow, water out. And the third connection here is simply drain. When you're finished using the shower unit, it's a good idea just to open, the, open that valve and then collect the water in a, in a bucket or a vessel. Just, it's good practice not to keep a shower unit full of water. So with that in mind, I've adjusted the tap to give a constant head of water, which you can just about see there. So that overflow is now taking water down and making it nice and smooth. We've also introduced these glass beads, which you can see there. Now they're there to also create the smoothest possible flow down that glass tube. So we want a nice laminar pattern of water in that, in that vessel there. A word of advice, when you fill the glass vessel with the beads, you must ensure that none of the beads are uh, accidentally introduced into this glass pipe. So for that reason, what I tend to do is just to get either some tissue or some foam and just slide it down through the hole just to prevent any stray beads from es escaping down the pipe. It's inevitable one or two beads will e escape, but one or two won't do any problem because they simply get flushed out into the drain. But we can ill afford to have that tube blocked at the bottom with, with, a, with two or three centimetres of, of beads. So that's what I've done there. The next stage of the installation process is to introduce ink into this little chamber at the top there. So we would recommend that you'd use safety goggles just to prevent any splashes of ink. And then the ink, it's simply Parker pen ink, which you put in your fountain pen is up there and you just quite literally pour it into the top there. Now I've diluted it a little bit which allows it to go further and last longer. So when you've done all that you are now actually ready to try and 
create a laminar flow. So with a combination of the head and that valve, we open that valve very slowly until you start to see, wait for it, a little trail of ink, which is what you see there. So that is an absolutely perfect example of laminar flow. So when you've got that condition, the students will then take a, a measuring jug with, known, with, with a known volume, say a 200 millimeter jug, and with a stopwatch, they will time, for example, over 30 seconds of how much water they are going to collect. Let me just adjust that a little bit. It takes a few seconds to, to find itself. When they've got that known value of flow rate, they then want to adjust that valve to get to a transitional flow. And the transitional flow is where you start to see some agitation in that pattern of ink, which I've actually started to recreate just by turning that valve. So let's just turn that down a bit. So now I'm going to open this bottom valve, which is increasing the flow through this pipe and now you can start to see a change in behavior of that ink. So when you start to see that little movement there, that's the agitation that it means it's, it's, not, it's neither here or there, it's not laminar, it's not turbulent, it's transition. You, and then you do the same again, you get your measuring jug, you measure a timed volume of water and that gives you a flow rate. And then the third step, while the ink's flowing, we open the valve even more until we get total chaos in the tube, which is turbulent. So same again, you take your measuring jug and you collect, you collect the known volume of water. And that's, that's the practical side of it over. All you're doing really is, take, is measuring a flow rate, okay? We'll close that valve and you do need to know the temperature of the water. So I've got a thermometer here and that would just simply sit inside there and at each stage you would measure the temperature of the water. Then though you can actually adjust the temperature of the water because like I said earlier changing the temperature will affect the Reynolds number. So just by adjusting the heater control there and a, and a more finer control there we can increase the temperature of the water up to about 60 to 70 degrees Celsius. And then you can do the experiments again at different temperatures. When you've got all that data, you can then effectively switch off. You've, you've, you've done the practical. The students will then do some simple maths and equations. The first thing they need to calculate is the velocity. Well, we know the velocity comes from knowing the flow rate knowing the vis viscosity of water and then when they got when they calculate the viscosity they can then take that into another equation and they can calculate the Reynolds number and then they can see the difference between the three conditions at different temperatures and that is, is basically the procedure